This is the new Jaguar F-Pace, and now what you're thinking, it's taken Jaguar a blooming age to finally release an SUV, but I tell you, <laughs> it's so worth the wait. This is a beautiful looking car. In fact, it makes me very proud to be British. In fact, let's just take a moment and revel in a spot of Britishness. Anyway, that's enough of that, and I know some of you might be thinking that, well, isn't Jaguar owned by Tata, which is Indian? Well, let's forget about that, because this car, it's designed, it's engineered, and it's built in Britain. And what a fabulous looking machine it is. Though, yeah, you do have to pay for that, because the F-Pace starts at 35 thousand pounds and if you click up there to go to carwow.co.uk you can compare deals from top dealers and buy at a price you're confident in and on average people save three thousand six hundred pounds on a new car through carwow and the great thing about the f-pace is that while it is absolutely beautiful it's also very very practical arise the boot arise so this is one of the biggest boots in its class there's hardly any load lift to lift stuff across there's some underfloor storage and there's various tethering points here 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 12 volt socket there so you can plug your hoover in and hoover out the boot now you can get this car with three-way split folding rear seats unfortunately you do have to lean in to lower the seats you fold down the middle one and then fold down this other one there and you can see you've got a pretty much flat load bay that makes it dead easy to slide big items straight towards the front of the car so yeah very very practical the f-pace so let's check out the space in the back now I'll just move these seats out of the way. Actually, that's really heavy. So the doors, they open nice and wide, which makes it really easy to get in. And the seats are kind of at hip height, so you can just glide straight across into your seating position. So as you can see, if I'm sitting up dead straight, I've got lots of knee room. Headroom's all right, even though this car has the optional glass roof. And yet, yeah, people over six foot will be fine back here. And there's some cool creature comforts as well. So if you want to, you can fold this down. You've got some cup holders there. And this is really useful. You've got two USB sockets down there and another 12 volt socket. So if you've got three people in the back, everybody can charge their mobile device. It's not all perfect though. So first of all, these seats are quite hard, but then I guess it is a sporty car. The backs feel quite upright as well, but you can get it with optional electrically reclining rear seats, but you do have to pay extra for those. More of a problem is this, you've got a huge hump in the floor. So if you want to carry three in the back at once, there's not much room for them to put their feet because the runners for the chair in front do eat into the foot space. And this middle seat, I mean, there's enough headroom, but it is quite firm. And on the whole, this car isn't as good at carrying three people in the back at once as say a Land Rover Discovery Sport or a Ford Edge. Now click up there to watch that in-depth practicality video review. You'll also be able to see how easy it is to fit a child seat here in the back of the F-Pace and just how much stuff we could cram into this car's boot. Speaking of practicality, actually, look at this. So the rear door bins are huge. They can fit a 1.5 litre bottle. And if I go to the front of the car, The door bins are equally as huge here. However, you don't buy an F-Pace for its cubby spaces now, do you? You buy it for the way it looks, and it's just as sporty here on the inside as it is on the outside. I mean, I really love the interior design of this car. What I'm not so keen on is some of the quality of the material. So materials here, here, and here, are all a bit flimsy and they're just not in keeping with this car's expensive price. So the model to go for is the R Sport. It's pretty much got all you need. You've got 19 inch alloy wheels, you've got Xenon headlamps, you've got all round parking sensors, you've got cruise control, you've got leather heated seats and you even get hide upon the dash which is a nice touch. You also get a standard an 8 inch infotainment screen. It's all right but it's not the slickest. What you're better off doing is upgrading to the Pro version. That's excellent, much more efficient, much nicer to use. And it's a bit like comparing an iPhone 7 to the iPhone 4 and this standard system obviously is the iPhone 4 and you can see why by clicking up there to watch our detailed infotainment video review. Now though it's time to hit the road so how does the F-Pace feel to drive? Well the best way to describe it is sporty so you feel like you're just sat in any other Jaguar only you're sitting higher up so you get a better view out over traffic though I have to say that hmm, visibility it's not quite as good as you might expect. You see, the view out the back window is atrocious, and I do find it a little bit hard to place the corners of the car, so it's not quite as easy to manoeuvre around town as you might think. And if you click up there to join me for a 360 degree passenger ride video, you can see for yourself. But then, you know, this is a big SUV, <laughs> but when you're driving it, especially through a twisty road, 
it feels it actually feels more like a hot hatch the steering's precise there's hardly any body roll at all so you're compelled occasionally i think with this f-pace to just go well wait a minute i've got i've got to be sure about this to just pull over get out and just <laughs> it absolutely 100 percent is an SUV, it just doesn't feel like one to drive. <laughs> now you can get the car with rear wheel drive only for the entry level models or four wheel drive and most people will probably go for the two litre diesel engine in this car and it's, it's up to the task and Jaguar says it'll do 53 miles per gallon but I'm averaging just, well, I'm averaging 38 which isn't quite as good as I hoped. Now, if you can afford it, I recommend you upgrade to the V6 diesel. And the reason is it feels noticeably quicker, and this car deserves a fast engine. You can also get a V6 petrol, but that's going to be too thirsty, so I wouldn't have that. Another benefit of that V6 diesel is that you get adaptive dampers as standard, and on the normal springs, which this car has, it does just feel a little bit too fidgety, the ride. Some people are going to find it too firm. The adaptive dampers help with that. It makes it feel smoother. But still, on the whole, this is quite a firm riding SUV. Something like a Mercedes GLC does glide up the road better than this. Another advantage of having the V6 diesel is that it comes as standard with the eight-speed auto. The two-litre doesn't. You get a manual. Now, the manual is good, but once again, this car deserves an automatic. Overall, the F-Pace is pretty impressive so far. However, there are some annoying things about it. Here's five. Lumber support is an option on all trim levels, which is a bit of a pain in the neck. Or should that be back? Sorry, that's a crap joke. Mm, look at the wavy stitching there. Was the same machine drunk? You can't just hold down the temperature button. You have to keep pressing it to make it go up. And it goes up in just 0.5 of a degree increments. The way this centre console sticks out, it's all too easy to bang your knee on it <laughs> when you're sliding across the back of the car. The F-Pace's fuel tank is slightly smaller than most of its rivals, which means you can go less far between fill-ups. Thankfully, the F-Pace does have some good features which help make up for all this. You can get a waterproof transponder wristband and it doubles as a kit. It allows you to lock and unlock the car, leave the normal keys in the car, and you can take this off swimming. The low friction launch system allows you to make an easy getaway on very slippery surfaces without spinning the wheels off. Tailgate weight down, lots of the car is made out of aluminium, but the tailgate is actually made out of plastic. Look, metal, plastic. You can get the car with a special slow mode cruise control for off-roading. To make sure this car feels as sporty to drive as possible, even all-wheel drive models only send a maximum of 50% of the car's power to the front wheels. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and compare deals on the Jaguar F-Pace at carwow.co.uk. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon if you can afford it, just go right ahead and buy it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. And click over there to watch our in-depth practicality, 360 degree passenger ride, and infotainment video review for the Jaguar F-Pace. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the cat treats hidden in one of the cubbies.